Welcome to the Money Show with Ms. Clo, the podcast that's all about mastering your money, building strong business credit, to financial success. I'm your host, Ms. Clo, here to guide you through the ins and outs of business finances and strategies to grow your business like never before. So whether you're just starting out building a business or you're looking to put your business to the next level, this is the show that's going to keep your life mindset sharp and your goals within reach. So let's go ahead and get started on this journey to financial retirement. So I've invited a guest, and joining me today is Dr. Lena Clark. And Dr. Clark is the founder and CEO of Miracle Mind Global. Uh, she has two decades in the middle of the business industry and has had both challenges and some successes. And Dr. Clark is going to tell us all about her business and journey. So before we actually uh, get into the big gritty thing, Dr. Clark, would you just tell us how you started your journey? Tell us a bit about you know what inspired you to start. Absolutely. Thank you so much. First, I want to say thanks for allowing me to be your first guest, and it's an honor. And uh, basically, Miracle Mind Global uh, was first after losing my husband to suicide in 2008, and so I basically was um, obedient to my calling. And so I had no idea that he was struggling, you know, with mental health issues, as we find that many men don't talk. So I just decided to move forward, um, educating uh, individuals, doing my research into mental health, especially uh, among males and um, African Americans, because I found that within the community of the Black uh, African Americans, I'm sorry, that uh, they were lacking resources, lacking information as far as health as well. So I also wrote a book titled An Amazing Mind, uh, which tells my story and it tells information or resources as well, giving, there's a timeline. And no point global, what we do is it's a twofold. And so we educate, we psychoeducate individuals on how the mind works. And we do visuals because a lot of people are visual. And so just like you go to a doctor for any physical ailment, they may do a CT scan, um, they may do MRI, they may also do x-rays depending on the severity of the injury. But when it comes to the mind, most people wanna go and see a psychiatrist and then they write prescriptions, they are meds, and it may put them in a state of lockdown again, depending on their diagnosis. So what we do is educate, because in everything we do, we are to get understanding. And so we want people to understand why am I feeling this way? Why do I feel depressed? Why am I waking up angry? Why am I stressed? And there are so many illnesses out there. So that's what we do. We also have 24 hour assistance and available um, professionals that are on call all the time. If anyone wants to get assistance, if just wants to want to talk to, if they want to want a professional, they just may want to talk to someone. Okay, that's, that's a good what our audience would know that the reason that I invited Dr. Clark is that most of the time when you're thinking about businesses, you're thinking about brick and mortar, you're thinking about businesses that are product. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know that there are other types of businesses out mm -hmm. there, and this is just one of them, because we're going to be diving into uh, a little bit of the cash flow operations and the things that all businesses have to experience at some point in time. But I just wanted to get it from the standpoint of non traditional. Type of business or something that we would not ordinarily think that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. We started uh, a podcast where we're talking about business and things. Mm -hmm. So, as your business has grown, uh, what would you say has been the biggest challenge that you face? Well, since we're talking about financial um, here, I would say uh, getting it off the ground because when you are an entrepreneur and you're servicing individuals, there is a lot that you have to put together. Of course, you need resources, you need funds. And so that was the most difficult thing that I basically was able to, um, that I saw that I struggled with, was to get the support that I needed to be able to fund the business, to be able to make sure that we had the assistance because people, of course, they need to get paid. And so for years, I went without getting paid because as you know, you know, it takes money to make money. And so even when it came to writing my book, you know, there were some people who, you know, donated. But when it came to the foundation, it was a lot that I had to learn along the way. 
and it wasn't me. And so when I took it to the few, there were things that I learned that when you're spending a personal money to build a business, you have other obligations. And at that time, as a widow with kids who were much younger, it was not easy trying to juggle everything. So financial literacy is so important and learning how to separate the two when it comes to personal and business because you don't want to finagle the two. So I think that's so important that we educate individuals on how to do that when we first start our businesses. And that was the thing that I struggled with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you talked about educate. You educate in your line of business. And we definitely, you know, educate on this side also. Mm -hmm. And cash flow is a common struggle that most entrepreneurs have. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say the majority, because that is exactly you know, how we start out. Mm -hmm. So uh, could you share a specific in issue when maybe cash flow was, was an issue? I know that businesses are starting out, new businesses, you don't have any cash flow. You right. haven't made any money, but yet you still are going to need mm -hmm. certain things mm -hmm. to run your business. Yes. So we consider that cash flow as well. So mm -hmm. even though you haven't generated revenue yet, right. you still are going to have a need to have some cash flowing mm -hmm. in your business. Mm -hmm. So what would you say that was something specific that you needed that slowed down your business because you didn't have cash flow? I would say, again, uh, when it comes to mental health, you know, you have professionals that you have to have on your team as well. And so going in the community, you know, to educate, we had seminars, we did workshops. And so, of course, we needed supplies. We needed uh, materials in order to be able to do what we needed to do. So when it came to ordering things, of course, we had T-shirts. We had uh, to deal with um, literature. We had printing materials that we needed to, to uh, also put out there. And then, of course, travel expenses. You know, so there are a lot. So those were the main things that were very cost uh, costly. Okay, mm -hmm. and those are things that you have to purchase and you occur before you ever get that first client or mm -hmm. that first customer. Yes. You've got expenses for your business. Mm -hmm. So it's not just you get that EIN and now you're good to go and mm -hmm. you know you can just start out. Right. So what's the need for all of those things? Where did you get the money? What did you what did you do? I had to use my personal money. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what most that's what most people do. They mm -hmm. start using their personal money. Yes. Okay. So one of the things that you know we we want to emphasize is that that's not necessary that mm -hmm. you use your personal uh, your personal money, right? And we want to make sure that as we talk and talk to different entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they get some of their experiences because we know that everybody is going to experience mm -hmm. this. It does not matter. I call it the business of business. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own unique uh, business. And you do what you do, but there are some things that are just consistent across the board that have to be considered, but regardless of the type of business right. that it is that you have. So let me ask you this: What would you say um, you did to, to turn any of the situations around? Looking, looking at some of the things that you've done, that you had to do. Mm -hmm. What would you share with our audience that uh, were some maybe some pitfalls or the things that they maybe could avoid or you know what advice would you give to them? I would say uh, do your research, you know, reach out to individuals that are in the profession of finances that can help you. Of course, you know, we have the base, but when it comes to and I'm being transparent here, when it comes to our color, you know, it's very difficult to obtain uh, support in that area, mm -hmm. getting the, the, the business off the ground. You know, so I mean they're uh, grants out there. There are different ways that you can uh, get uh, financial support when you start your business. But at that time, again, you know, I had to reach out to associates, uh, friends, um, neighbors who were compassionate about what I was doing, okay. who were willing to support me. And until I was able to uh, move forward in the business. So those that were really supportive and compassionate and, and were connected because there are a lot of people who were suffering with mental illness within their family had suffered themselves. And so they wanted to go ahead and support me financially. And so that was one of the ways that I was able to move forward. And that's what held me down until I was able to get other resources coming in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is how you were able to address the situation at the time that 
would have slowed down your progress as far as moving with this before. Right. So that's yeah. the reason that you know we are having this discussion today, mm -hmm. so that we can bring to the forefront some of the and be transparent and talk about things that mm -hmm. really do happen and you need to be mm -hmm. need to be aware of. So let me ask you this. Um, let's talk about business credit. When you hear the term business credit, what comes to your mind? Business credit meaning uh, credit for well, under your business. Okay. Under your business. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So we're talking business credit, then everybody is saying credit in your business name. You've got mm -hmm. an EIN. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we strive to uh, impress upon everyone is that when you get that EIN, you mm -hmm. want to build a business profile. Mm -hmm. Because without that business profile, you're going to get curved back. And you're not going to always understand why you are being turned in. Mm -hmm. And I might just say, right now, business credit is something that really is trending on Facebook. You see people yes. uh, talking about business credit, follow me, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. So it really is something that you need to uh, you need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, well, I don't I want to say for some reason, but I think when I say what I'm about to say, we'll know the reason. Mm -hmm. We only know. SBA and bank when it comes to business financing. That's what we know. I want to start a business, but my personal credit is not what it should be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's jack. Right. Okay? And therefore, I can't go to the bank. Mm -hmm. We know that SBA does make loans, but we also know that they have a lot of requirements. Mm -hmm. They want tax information and they want a lot of things that don't have. Yeah. So we just fall back to using our own money. Mm -hmm. And then there in lies the problem that is going to just snowball if we don't get, get a handle in the very beginning. So it's nothing wrong with starting out just using your own money. But what we're saying is you don't have to continue to do that. Many business owners use their personal assets to right. fund their operations. And this can be risky when you're doing that. And business credit is one way to, uh, to separate business mm -hmm. and personal because they are not the same. And that is something else that you know you don't really know. Mm -hmm. You have credit, your very first credit card you got out of high school, they've been tracking you all that. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, that's what we have become accustomed to. And during when life is lively and things happen, things can happen that will affect your credit. So now you want to start a business and you think that that will affect your ability. Mm -hmm. That is not necessarily what the situation is. They are not one and the same. Business credit actually starts the day that you started. So why well, as you might have started your personal credit back when mm -hmm. business credit has started today. And it's just based on how you take business. It's not based on that history that you have of life events that happen that cause you to do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But this is again uh, one of the challenges that a lot of entrepreneurs, business people face, regardless of how long they do. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time, even if you have resources with the bank and the bank gives you a credit card, they have run it on your personal, on your social, and they just want to know what name you want on it. And then when you put your business name on it, you think you have business credit, and that's not necessary, necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. So that is something that, you know, we are going to, over the course of time, be spending some time talking about. For this question, if I ask you, what would you say is the biggest hurdle for your business? What have you found to be mm -hmm. the biggest hurdle that you've had to overcome? To obtaining mm -hmm. business credit? Is it the application process, mm -hmm. requirements, or just simply knowing where to, where to start? What would you mm -hmm. say that you see for actually going the hurdle? I would say for me, it was knowing where to start. Uh, it was knowing, and then a lot of it came to not understanding the process as well, because they say credit, but then when it's over your personal information, you're like, okay, why is it business credit? But then you want your personal. So to me, I'm thinking it should be separate. But if you don't understand how the process works, then you won't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So when you said you don't know how the process works, and that's what we talked about, there is a process involved. And if you don't know the process, you could be doing things out of order and getting turned down mm -hmm. because of that. And it has nothing to do with the things that the things that turn you down because of. Right. But there is there is a process involved. So we talked about 
about the application process, uh, you say you should be separate. Lenders need to realize So even though there will be times that you may have to put information that identifies you, there are, that's because they don't know who you are. So that is the way that we can learn through something that tracks everything, that that's mm -hmm. how we are identified. But again, it is a separate process. Mm -hmm. And as you talk about credit, and this is something that I will get into in the podcast, that this credit is actually something that is a process that is developed in tiers. There are requirements, and most people don't know the requirements that lenders have. Mm -hmm. And lenders have different requirements. And one of the things that we know is that each time that you apply to a lender and you're turned down, that is a pull on your credit. So you know that we don't want that happening. But how can you know what the requirements are before you actually go out there and plan it? So that is again, and then knowing where to start. Mm -hmm. That is a big thing. And where to start. You know. And you had back up when you said you needed resources that family and friends that believe in what you did. And that will continue to that will continue to exist. Mm -hmm. But again, alternative. You had an alternative, right? And that's one of the things that, you know, uh, my company, we are alternative mm -hmm. lenders. So again, having an alternative is very important. Mm -hmm. um, another advantage, one of the another advantage of business credit is that it is more flexible than traditional loans. So it allows you to tap into funds that you need to do things that you can get to go on a day-to-day basis. <laughs> there are vendors, clients out there, they exist to offer you the ability to get those products, those items that you need on a daily basis. And they're just startup accounts, and that's what they're mm -hmm. there for. So right. there is a place for you to start, mm -hmm. and uh, you need funds for things like we mentioned, inventory, payroll, mm -hmm. uh, new equipment. So the question is, how do you think the flexibility to impact your ability to manage your cash flow and invest in your growth if you can get the things that you need. Mm -hmm. So again, we're just saying that business credit, while we're we're talking about it, is one of the ways that you can that you can uh, get the things you need on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. So as you are following people who have gone to what I call Facebook University mm -hmm. and they are talking about business credit and what they did. Just know that that was what they did, and that was what worked for them. And you want to be very cautious because when you are following what someone else is doing, their set of circumstances and their criteria may not be the same as yours. So you want to know that you are following a process that is there for businesses, and if you can find one that is going to be tailored to your specific business, mm -hmm. it might be that what you did would be a little bit different from what they have done. And you don't want to just burn off those uh, pulls on your credit and then get frustrated to say, well, you know, it got turned down. Mm -hmm. This just doesn't work, you know. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of frustration, a lot of frustration yes. involved. Mm -hmm. um, could you say that, have you been frustrated at any time as you have been mm -hmm. building your business? Well, we're saying, what, two, two decades? I said two decades. Yes. But mm -hmm. I did not know the exact number. Uh -huh. oh, it's exactly 17 years. Okay. Yes. Seventeen. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what advice are you going to give somebody that's just starting out <laughs> to, uh, so that uh -huh. they don't have to go through some of those same things you may have gone through? Yes, I would say planning is so important. Number one, plan. Uh, seek advice uh, is so important as well. Some of us get, you know, anxious in, in wanting to get started, but you're going to need that cash flow, you know, because you're going to have to have inventory. And so, I would just say, plan ahead. You know, of course, uh, seek uh, advice from someone or a company that you trust. That's another thing that I ran into, you know, having individuals coming on board and assisting in that area. Some people had an ulterior motive and that can affect your business. They can also cause you to lose your business. So I always say, just be careful who you select when you decide to bring someone to help with your planning and to put things into place. So I did run into that problem because everybody doesn't have your best interest at heart when it comes to setting up your business and also being a part of your business too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So getting back to, you know, to me, it always comes back to how can you do this without bankrupting yourself? Mm -hmm. And how can you get those things that you need to move your business forward when you don't have the money? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, you know, uh, have a lot of misconceptions 
about how to do that. Mm -hmm. And when you first heard about business credit, what, what was your thought? What did you think about it? Did you have any feelings one way or the other or? Well, not really, uh, because it was later down the road when I did find out about it. However, I did pursue it uh, because I was so busy running the business and using, again, my finances, personal finances to build the business. But, um, you know, to answer your questions, when I did hear about it and when I did attempt, it was OK. Business credit, they are asking for your business information. But like you were saying, my question was, why are they wanting so much personal? Because that can also cause a person to not want to move forward because when you're using your personal, sometimes it can put you in a snowball effect. Yes. And so that's, that's what happened. And so I lost interest in wanting to pursue the business credit because I was just too far in with my personal credit and everything that I was trying to build on that end. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That part, what she said, she mm -hmm. was so busy running her business mm -hmm. that she did not necessarily look at, you know, that mm -hmm. aspect of it. Yes. And my question to uh, entrepreneurs every day is how much time are you spending in your business? Mm -hmm. And how much time are you spending on your business? Mm -hmm. Because when you're spending all your time in your business, there's another aspect of business that is being overlooked or is not being dealt with that is going to make a difference so that you can spend more time mm -hmm. in your business. So right. I know it sounds like a catch-22 and maybe it really is, mm -hmm. but that's something that I want everybody to think about. If you got mm -hmm. a business, ask yourself, how much time am I spending in my business doing what I do and how much time am I spending on my business? Yes. Because uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about business credit. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a belief that it's too difficult. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, to establish. And that it's only for large companies. Some yes. people think it's only for large companies. Mm -hmm. And I can give you an example. Walmart, approximately 85% of the things that they have, they use business credit to get. Mm -hmm. The more business credit that you get, the more business credit you can get. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking about, uh, as we call them, net 30 accounts, mm -hmm. just think about a store, a big box store like that. And we all shop there. And if you know how many times does that merchandise turn over within a 30 day period? Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the 30 days, it's time to make a payment. Mm -hmm. So think about how much profit can be made before it's time to pay. So in, debt is not necessarily a bad thing when you are in business, mm -hmm. because like you said earlier, it takes money. It takes money to make money. Right. But again, there's such thing as good debt when you are talking about talking about business. Mm -hmm. And uh, many misconceptions have to do uh, with what we have mentioned and that. Mm -hmm stops people. They just don't move forward. Mm -hmm. They don't move forward. Absolutely. They don't. And for instance, like when COVID hit 2020, everything shut down. So you have a business, you're an entrepreneur, you're not making any money. Okay. But you still have those bills to pay. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you have inventory, you know, you may get a few calls here and there, but if they're not making money, how are they're not going to be able to support your business? And, and so with the business credit, I was very, very, um, disappointed because it just did not make sense to me. And so, you know, it was, uh, I lost lack of interest in wanting to move forward. Okay. Yes. When you lose that lack of interest and you don't move forward, it stops mm -hmm. and you are not prepared for the loan that you could get mm -hmm. if all of the duck, if all of your ducks were in a row. Yes. Lenders have, you know, maybe 125 different requirements. You don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. And we want to prepare you so that when you need the loan, you can get the loan. Mm -hmm. But if you're now asking for the loan and you have not prepared, you've got to go all the way back to the very beginning. Yes. And then I know that that can be disheartening. Mm -hmm. And then it is a deterrent, like you say. And then you go right back to using your own money. Mm -hmm. So this is something that, you know, we want to stop that cycle right. and let our audience know that you don't have to continue to use your own money mm -hmm. to fund your business. And then I like to use OPM. Mm -hmm. I'm down with OPM. That's other people's money. Mm -hmm. So we talk about and show you how that you can use other people's money mm -hmm. in order to uh, advance your advance your business. Yes. OK. Um, are there. At the next step in your business, what resources do you see that uh, are going to be valuable to you when you consider, you know, building mm -hmm. from here? Mm -hmm. 
Um, if I may, before I answer that question, uh -huh. I want to add this. I uh, The resources and not having the resources really affects a lot of individuals who want to start businesses, especially uh, our culture. I hear many people say, well, they have gifts. They've always wanted to do this and do that uh, with their um, purpose, regarding their purpose, but they were afraid to do it because they didn't have the money. So I think because, and this is a great podcast that you have, educating is so important because lack of knowledge um, is, is missing in so many areas as individuals, even myself, didn't know I just stepped out there in faith and did not have uh, that, that foundation and education coming up. It was always say, put money aside, but there are steps to even doing that. Yes. You know, so I think I just wanted to share that, but um, as far as the uh, moving forward, when it comes to mental health, it's a different ballgame because you have to have a team. You know, you have to have professionals in different areas because you're dealing with clients. You're dealing with individuals. You're dealing with the public. So you also have to have um, locations where you can have people to come and get the resources. You have to have your offices and those are the main things what you have to offer, because when it comes to mental health, people want 24 hour help. And so we are 24 hours. OK, so we have to have people on call. And so, again, some are volunteers and some are not. Some are actually, you know, they have to be paid. And so even the platforms that we use when it comes to um, mental health. Um, how are we seeing these clients? Mm -hmm. What are we providing for them? So ongoing platforms, which is falls on the inventory, you know, we have to make sure that that, that is um, constant, that we're consistent with that. I'm sorry, because we're global as well. So we have clients that are overseas. We have clients in Africa and other parts of the world. So we also travel. And so a lot of times traveling isn't included. Sometimes we're not paid. You know, we have to get out there and do what we have to do to put our name out there. And eventually it comes back, but you need that resource. You need those resources and the funding up front. So that is basically what we're, we're trying to do is to put it out there, different states to actually grow the business and to let people know that mental health is real because so many people are not um, knowledgeable and, and they are still afraid because of the stigma. So it's, it's, it's more of a service and when you're providing a service, it, it's a lot of work. It's, it's more work. So having that that right team to support you is is so important. So that's what we're building right now is building a, a different team to take mental health to another level. I'm glad that you mentioned COVID because a lot of people, and I'm not trying to talk about the PPP loans, but mm -hmm. I am talking about the PPP loans mm -hmm. because that's what everybody recalls as yes. that was going to save them during that period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have COVID right now. Mm -hmm. So you still need money for those same things mm -hmm. uh, like you talked about for payroll and a lot of yes. miscellaneous kinds of things. And people are still coming trying to find where can I get a PPP loan? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to let you understand that if you establish business credit, mm -hmm. you can get all of those things and there are loans that you can get mm -hmm. that if you have the resources with your business to pay the loans back, there are loans that you can get for payroll. There are mm -hmm. loans that you can get for all of these things. And it's not just waiting on, you know, the government mm -hmm. to give you a program because what you need does exist right now. It's just a matter of knowing how to go out there and to, to get it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about because with uh, when we talk about business funding, funding can take the shape of, a uh, high limit credit card. It can mm -hmm. be a line of credit or it can be a loan. Mm -hmm. We automatically jump to loan. That's the first, that's what comes to mind first mm -hmm. is I need a loan. I want to say you need funding. Right. And then we can determine whether or not you need a mm -hmm. loan mm -hmm. because the loan is the most difficult to get. Mm -hmm. The credit that you need for day-to-day -day operations is very easy to get if you want to, if you are willing to follow the process. Yes. And again, and not get frustrated and just mm -hmm. stop. Exactly. Not get frustrated and, and stop. Right. And and that's the thing. Having someone to support you and hold your hand through the process is so important because I didn't have that. That helps you understand because you are going to get weary along yes. the way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you want to give up. And, and so, again, I did because even when you mentioned the PPP during the COVID, 
I didn't find out about that until basically when it was almost over. Okay. But however, the ones who received it didn't need it, you know, yes. and finding out. So I was like, wow, you know, and it was very, very little that I did uh, uh, obtain. Mm -hmm. So again, because I wasn't out there, I wasn't in that game. I was basically trying to figure it out on my own and again, supplying the, um, the needs with my own personal resources. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I just, you know, want to, you know, say that educating our audience about business finances, mm -hmm. uh, business credit, business loans, that is what my business is about. Mm -hmm. You educate people on your, your side of the fence as well. Mm -hmm. And again, knowing what to do, knowing where to start. Mm -hmm. And we're not, you know, beating up on anybody, but you don't know what you don't know. Right. And you can't do anything about it. But when you know better, what is it that they say? Mm -hmm. Do better. Do better. Absolutely. Do better. Yes. Okay. And one other thing I want to add too, even though you have, for instance, what you're doing, mm -hmm. Starting out or even obtaining, it's just like uh, obtaining a lawyer, retaining someone to support you or represent you. That's something that you have to come up to with resources. You mm -hmm. got to pay. Yes. So when you have your business, you're still making a decision. You have to make a decision. Okay. Do I pay them to do this? Because I have these bills to pay in order to move the business forward. So it's like, okay, it's, it's, it's a, uh, situation where you just don't know which way to go mm -hmm. you know you need that assistance but then you got to pay in order to get it so you're sacrificing over here in order to get something done so i just wanted to put that out there because it is real it does happen okay mm -hmm. okay well we have attempted to be as transparent as we could possibly be mm -hmm. to share some information with you yes and to bring a, a real entrepreneur mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. have her share her experiences and how some of these uh I'm sure our thoughts that you've had, if you have a business, mm -hmm. you're sitting here saying, uh-huh, mm -hmm. yep, that happened, that sure did, that was me. So hopefully we've been able yes. to, you know, give a little insight into how to get around mm -hmm. uh, and not have as many obstacles as we as you may have had. Yes. So I just, you know, want to say, Dr. Clark, I really do appreciate you sharing your experiences Absolutely. And, and insights with us today. And before we wrap up, what would you give our fellow entrepreneurs who are facing similar challenges mm -hmm. with their cash flow? What would you say to them? Mm -hmm. I would say, again, uh, reach out because there's money out there. It, and, and so you just have to know uh, where to go um, and, and get the right connection. It's all about the connection and not being able, um, not being afraid to step out and ask for help because a lot of people feel like they could do it on their own. They do their research, as you mentioned, the Facebook family, but just ask questions, find someone who you think can help you. If you don't know, ask someone else who's in that line of work and refers to me, referrals are so important. And that's what I eventually started doing. I was asking questions, putting it out there and God put someone in my life to assist me, you know, an assistant that I have. And then, so they were able to, um, find resources, volunteers. There are a lot of people who are willing to volunteer their, their assistance, their help. And so when you get someone that's willing to help you in that area, just sit down and say, Hey, this is what I need. It's okay to ask for help. And so a lot of entrepreneurs don't, don't want to do that in the beginning. I did not. I was like, okay, I got this, but I really didn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's great advice. And then I want to thank you again, Dr. Clark, for being on the money club with show. Mm -hmm. The money show with yes. flow is a tongue twister. <laughs> and so I've got to get 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 where I can just have it roll off my tongue as well. But uh, how can our listeners find you? How can they get a hold of you? Absolutely. Miracle Mind Global. I am on the uh, website, MiracleMindGlobal.com. Or you can email us at MiracleMindGlobal at gmail.com as well as we have a phone call. I'm sorry, we have a phone number is 404-990-9997. And we are available 24-7. But our website has a lot of information as far as what we do, the services we provide. And we also have a book, as I mentioned, An Amazing Mind that you can get on Amazon.com. And it's titled An Amazing Mind by Dr. Lena Clark. Okay, well, thank you. And to our listeners out there, if today's conversation resonated with you and you want to learn more about how business credit can help fund your business, 
uh, how it can help your business grow without putting your personal assets at risk, feel free to reach out to me, Clotilda Jackson, by going to my website, www.orchardbusinessfunding.com, and you can download your free guide. And it's called the Ultimate Business Credit Financing Guide. It's absolutely free. It's just downloading. And everything you need to know about funding your business, you can get a head start right there. So until next time, I want you to stay focused, stay ambitious, and keep building your business dreams.